there's a championship match coming up, we are going to take on the winner. There is still a path to victory. We are here to erase villains and bring back heroes. You can throw anybody you want at me. I'm gonna hold on to this thing for years until finally somebody has to like forcibly retire me to be like, okay, Hector, we need other people to play. I can't stop here. You can't just get here and then stop. I gotta go for Hector. So Hector, it's you and me, man. Christian Harlow. This is the match I've wanted since I started in the Schmodin. I get texts from you all the time how much you want a title match, and it's pretty ironic that you actually have to beat me in order to get one. I've beat you twice already. I'm shocked, this and I beat you, you once. Get Dan next. For a year, I fought my ass off to get a shot at Dan, and I beat him. But I'm happy to take you and Merle on. You want to do this? That's the triple I, threat. So he's going to give me a shot at that belt at Collider Collision. We're going to make this a triple threat. What's up, Movie Trivia Schmodown fans? Jen Sturger here. We're on the big day. It's Collider Collision. Let's go talk to some of your favorites and see what's going on. See who we can track down. The gang's all here. What? Huge spread. All the competitors are kind of hanging out, sizing each other up. I saw this. It said dirt. It's like a mud pie of some sort that I'm eating before I go on camera, which is stupid because this is all going to be in my tape. Viviani, Viviani holding court over here. Nope. So we got your dirt cups, we got your tortilla chips, we got some salad. No one's touching that. <laughs> yeah, I need to talk to you. Yeah, you should eat the sandwich while you do it and knock over everything on the table. Should have put it in my boobs. Creepy nuns, man, everywhere. Christian. Perfect timing. Perfect timing. Mm -hmm. Christian's like, Jen, make sure you get everyone. Just barge into their face, it's, even I, if I they're did. eating. Good. Did the I do note. a good job? Took the note. I just <laughs> but you're the one that's got to take the onion dip. I do. I am taking the you onion are. dip. <laughs> so what are your predictions today? I know you got to have a few uh, little insider bits. All I am tunnel visioning on is me and Hector. Yep. And I feel confident in myself. Um, it's a lot of information rattling up there, so hopefully I can pull at will what I need to pull, because it's all—it's it, there. I just need to pull it out. Well, the internet, the lovely Smowdown fans, decided to say, Jay, you should bring together like a uh, deadly viper assassination squad. You already have your, uh, you have your black mama and your California mountain snake. And I was like, you know what? I already know who's going to be my cotton mouth and my copperhead. So there's some there's some uh, potentials out here. You aren't even gonna drop some names for me, no hints for the Schmodown fans. Just know I'm putting together an elite squad of four women who are all beasts in the Schmodown. Oh damn! In the big three-way match, man, it's 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 tough. It's tough because you got uh, Riley, who's champion, who's obviously champion for a reason. He's the most experienced out of all of them. Then you have Merle. Who, who is a fountain of knowledge and who has the most defenses. Then you have John Roca, who I think Roca is more of a hot and cold player, but when he's hot, like he can go, you know, all the way. Late to the party. Thank you. What's going on, guys? Not a whole lot. Come on, scoot hanging in. Out. Everybody scoot in. Yeah, I'm just Same hanging out. Seats. But they just pay me to hang out. That's all I do. Really don't have any relevance here. You want me to hold it? Yeah, I think okay, you should hold it. It's really good. heavy. Yeah. I, I haven't worked out delts today. That's okay. Oh, how are you feeling? You guys had a really impressive showing. We, yeah, definitely. And the, the reception that came afterwards was beyond belief. So Amazing. we are yeah. really, really excited. Uh, for what's to come for late to the party and just for the Schmodown in particular. Uh, the big three-way match, well, let's see here. Uh, we got my man, uh, John Roca, AKA head of the Four Horsemen. That ain't gonna work out too well. You know, the, those guys are a bunch of losers. Uh, let's see, Dan Merle, Dangerous Dan Merle. He's a good, good, good competitor. He's, I, don't, I don't think I've ever really seen him lost except for that one match. Mark Riley, of course, fellow Trojan, uh, USC, fight on. Um, I think that's who I'm rooting for here is Mark Riley. How are you feeling going into today? Well, I mean, obviously, I'm I'm disappointed that I'm not playing today. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, you know, we got we got horse persons representing. 
Uh, and, uh, you know, we got to. Are you here scouting competition, maybe? Well, I'm always scouting competition in that I'm uh, uh, basically trying to find out everybody's everybody's little weaknesses, everybody's little kryptonites, everybody's little, little well, you thing found that mine. you put. Oh, Kittens. yeah. Kittens. <laughs> I'll just show up with my cat. I'll bring it in if we ever compete, and it'll be a lot of fun. How are you um, feeling about today's uh, three way match? Uh, you know, uh, they're, they're tough competitors. It's going to be a really, really fun match, I think, for everyone at home, I think, uh, for all of us here in the audience. And uh, obviously, I have a horse in the race. <laughs> How are you feeling today, man? Ready to go. Um, we got everything done. We are a lot of good matches, but I think the big thing, this is why I didn't want to compete today. Why? Because i got to organize all this stuff. I feel like you're already making excuses, Christian. Uh-uh. Listen, I've told everybody, I don't want to win this match, but I'm going to play my hardest because I don't know, I don't know how to not be competitive. But we'll see what happens. But overall, I'm really looking forward to that uh, triple threat. Uh, excuse me, Sister Mary. Oh my God! It's Ashley. What's going on? This is Sister Mary Rotten. Sister Mary oh. Rotten. And this is Sister Mary Tomato. Oh, obviously. Yeah. I am none of your business. She is none of the above. <laughs> so wait, wait, wait. What made you decide to wear this getup today? It was our calling. Thank you for asking. Bless you. <laughs> and Thank you. We're on a mission from God. Oh well, praise be, praise be. So, Rotten Tomatoes, how are you feeling going into today's match? You a little nervous? We're, no, we're so confident because I'm, I'm filled with the spirit today. How about you, Sister Mary Rotten? Uh, I, I'm feeling extremely holy, Sister Mary Tomato. Uh, I feel blessed, and uh, I think the Lord will be with us. We are hashtag blessed. Should I turn the, do I have to turn this off? No, you, you should do it like that. Just do it like that. Like this. Look at your over the shoulder. You should, you know. <laughs> two two angles. <laughs> Wait, which way should I do it? This way? How's that? Yeah. They're gonna want this photo from me now. It's not copyrighted. This is so weird. So what are you? Are you the muscle? Or are you the Paul Heyman? <laughs> I'm a bit of both, and I'm also a competitor. So don't forget the inner geekdom. Whoever wins today doesn't matter. I'm still coming for it. Who are you going for in the inner geekdom? I'll give it to Navarro, mm -hmm. only because I want Navarro. I mean, Navarro, he's a good competitor. He knows his stuff. He does a lot of geek stuff. But a black geek is the greatest thing you could ever have. He and says. I mean a parfait. <laughs> That's not a parfait. It's a goddamn parfait. It has chocolate in it. Parfaits are the best damn thing in the whole world. Donkey from Shrek. I don't know. I have a feeling because of what happened with Top Ten, the luck is going to roll Roka's way this time, and he's going to be able to ride that hot streak to the championship. Oh, what, you, what, you, what do you think is going to happen, oh my Egg Hobster? God. Yeah. Well, since this thing's rigged, I already know who's going to win. <laughs> it's not um, rigged. No, I'm, I'm very excited. Uh, i got to support Ken and Rachel for Nerds Watch. They're, you know, I love Rachel. The fam. She's the fam. Uh, Ken, obviously, one of the greatest human beings of all time. And Rachel, uh, one of the strongest female competitors in this league. No for doubt. For sure. Um, and then uh, Hector and Jones. I mean, shoot. I love Jeremy. Don't tell him I said this, but I think Hector's got it. Don't, don't, shh, don't tell him, Hector. Don't tell him. I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind seeing, uh, I wouldn't mind seeing the belt hand, uh, handed over into some new hands, but, you know, I, I personally, I see Riley as an overall competitor, uh, defended it once, um, you know, he re re regained it again, so I don't see any other competitor out there who, uh, who has the, the type of endurance that uh, Mr. Mark Riley does, so I think that's who I got. today there's oh a lot my of God. huge matches what about the uh the big three-way match how you the feeling big, about that? Oh. the big three well, I, I, I feel like we got to come up with a better name i know really but one it sounds awkward and also I, how can i pick between the three of them no right i'm afraid roca's gonna explode if he doesn't win so i think just for that reason alone i have to be rooting for roca you're not the least bit nervous that you're going up against no, Push. against who? Nerds Watch? Yes. Yeah, it's the, uh, I feel like we're on the Lord's side, but the other guy has control of them, right? Yeah. No match for us.
Good point. Well, you know. How much, how much fear do we have of them? None. None. Oh, Ken. Ken. Jen. Good to you? see you, sir. Good to see you. How are you feeling about I'm, today? Uh, I'm feeling nervous, excited. Uh, I, my mind is all over the place, but I, I, I feel confident. Yeah. I said a lot of emotions. Well, I just ran into Rotten Tomatoes back here, and uh, there's there's definitely been some trash talking, despite being really? dressed like nuns. They're dressed like nuns and they're trash talking? I have nothing but respect for them. I do plan on defeating them, but I, Matt and Gray are two of the best people in this business. Yeah, and today ah, they have Jesus on their side, apparently. Oh, man. There's a, a new competitor on the scene, Tim Franco. Oh, my God, wasn't that cool? Right? He was great. He was impressive. He yeah. kind of was a little reminiscent of someone. Uh, certain, he reminds me of a young Bibiani. <laughs> uh, no, honestly, all of those late to the party people. They were really, they really knew their stuff. I think a lot of people were just like, "Who are these people?" And then they they stepped up to the plate. They proved that they can compete in this league, and I think we're all pretty impressed. I think some people are pretty scared. Not me. But I think some people have every right to be worried every time these folks make the journey over here and and step into the step up to the plate. They're amazing. Let's be real. It's, it's not easy to step into an arena with, with the likes of yourself and compete as a fan. No, I mean, they're really being, awesome. So like it's 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 and modest. really complicated. So we have to ask you guys, because you are the Schmodown experts. In who reacting are, to them, yeah. <laughs> who are you guys going with today? Um, you know what? We actually had to show our support uh, on visually. A You're choosing w sides. Yeah, the the in the WWE oh type of fashion. We've got Nerds Watch coming out on top over Rotten Tomatoes because Tim knows uh, Rotten Tomatoes aren't certified fresh. Yeah, it doesn't seem like it. You know, there might be a little bit of a bruised tomato there. I think. Yep. Ooh. And uh, we've got Christian Harloff hopefully coming out over the champ Snyder because he's Snyder and. He is the villainous villain that you could possibly have in this league. Uh, and the inner geekdom. And of course, we've got the, Miss, wrath, of the, John. the wrath of Johns. Yes, Jeremy's gonna take it. Yeah? I think so. Huh? Hopefully. That's, I love that's the what signs. We're going for. It's becoming more and more like a pay per view <laughs> up in this joint. I don't think I can make predictions. Really? I can't make predictions. But you have to. Like, I gun can't. to your head. I can tell you who I think is going to win. Dip to your shirt. Off camera, but I can't I, because it's just I say, oh well, but he said he wanted that person to win, and then they won. So obviously he pulled the strings and made that person win. So people do think you have a lot more pull here than they. Isn't that true? Yeah, it's yeah. crazy. She, I, she hired me. You know what's really funny about Mr. Christian Harloff? I've been working with him for a very long time, and I've seen him compete in Schmodowns in the past, and I've seen him get very competitive. I've never seen him more calm going into matches before. He's almost serene. It's almost, because I know he's the commissioner, I know he's running this whole thing, and so I think that's kind of helping with him, because he's more concerned. He's distracted. I think he's not so much distracted, but I think more concerned for the event going well overall. So if he loses, I don't think he's going to be that bummed. It's just a nice little cherry on top if he does win. And then in, as far as the, uh, the big three match, I mean, uh, Dan's pretty damn good. Outlaw's the outlaw, but got to go with my boy Yodi. Rachel, Rachel. Oh, Rachel. Yeah. Um, partner, partner. Uh, Hello, Jen. Hello, how are you? She's she saying Rotten Tomatoes is kind of talking some crap against us. We were so nice to them, I though. Know, that's what I was saying. She also claims Jesus is on their side. I believe yeah. her reporting skills. You probably got a good quote from Jesus about them, right? Yeah, I mean, I haven't been able to track Jesus down today, but I'm working on it. I'm, I'm still looking for Jesus. A lot of people are. <laughs> How are you feeling about today's matches? Are you just kind of hanging out, sizing up people? As a champion, I just like to watch how other people are below me. Um, I like to see the challenge. I'm looking for a challenge out there amongst the competition. I usually don't see it. Really? It just doesn't happen very often. So can I get your predictions today on a few matches? Um, whoever wins will still be a loser because I'm a champ and they're not. Now when it comes to the big match, the, the problem is, is that because we were not scheduled to be here we don't know if we're going to be here for that final match due to airplanes <laughs> so yeah the cool good thing good job is, on is, that one guys yeah, yeah well you know it's work nine to five and uh, not dolly parton though um <laughs> we've got we may not be here for that last match which gives us the opportunity to react and not know anything for that final match but when it comes down to our predictions i'm thinking it's going to be Dangerous Dan Merle reclaiming the title. That's me. 
I think it's going to be Dan Merle as well. He's, uh, I think he's on a mission, and he doesn't miss too often, so I think he's going to take it. I love Riley, but I, I also think Dangerous Dan Merle's going to take it because I think he's hungry for redemption, so I think he's going to take back the title. All right, I'm going to go a different way. I still have hope for Roka, so I'm going to go Roka. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Don't get up uh, on the outlaw. I already, I already, already feel the group starting to... So who haven't gotten yet? Oh, seriously? Oh, Jesus Christ. Sorry, nuns. The ultimate winner's here. Wait, um, really? Yeah. I haven't I haven't seen Roka. Well, no, he's a loser. Well, you saw what happened to him the other day. In the titles match, he was like a deer in headlights the whole match. He cost his team the championship. We all have our off days. Yeah, but he's done. He's had a bunch of off days in a row. So what's the deal? You, you drop the Finstock mask, and then you pick up these sunglasses from... Gucci. CVS? No, these are Gucci. Those are CVS. No, these are real. Those you are know. Fuchi. They're Fucci. No way. I'll show you. I got receipts. How are you feeling going into the day? Confident. Always. I mean, these, as confident as you can feel against these two guys, which are two of the best to play the game. Yeah. Uh, well, at least one with Riley. Anything so, you're a little nervous about? Um, You know, this game has gotten harder, I think, as it's progressed, just because the caliber of the competitors has gotten even higher and so I think it's even more of a wild card now not knowing what categories you're gonna come up with gonna come up on that wheel and only get the game doesn't get easier just gets harder. hi really? the champ is here how you doing good hi, hey. sunglasses because this future's so bright that's right how are you feeling going into today I'm feeling loose you are yeah I'm feeling good stretched. I'm stretched remember got up early did a little jog on the beach you know <laughs> Things like that. Rocky that, montage. Little Rocky montage. Uh, screamed uh, Drago from the top of a sand hill. Uh, but in this case, I screamed Merle and uh, <laughs> Roka. Who are you guys going with in the, in the big three-way match today? It's really hard for me to bet on anyone. But Roka, the Lord. Riley, you know what I mean? Merle. Really? I mean, really the, Jesus? The, the three-way that we love is the Holy Trinity. <laughs> Who are you guys wanting in the, the three-way today? Who you got? Yeah. Who you got? Who you got? Uh, who you got? Hashtag. Who you got? Uh, I think about three ways a lot, and I'll tell you what. <laughs> I think that. Sorry, that was a mic pop. <laughs> um, I I think I am going with Dangerous Dan Merle. Really? I love Mark Riley. Mark Riley is a friend. But Dan's a friend too, and I've been I've been on the road with Dan. I know what's in his soul, and it's a fire. It's a quiet fire, and Dan is burning pretty bright today. Quiet fire is the most dangerous. I've seen yeah. backdraft. Yeah. I think uh, Jeff Snyder, of course, will de destroy Christian Harloff. I think Christian has just been lucky, honestly. And I think Jeff's proven he's better than luck. Uh, who else? Rotten Tomatoes is playing the Night's Watch, and they're going to play us. I'm not worried about either of them. Really? I'm not worried about either of them. I mean, they're just, they're amateurs. I feel like I'm in the amateur league and I'm a champion. I've broken so many showdown records. I beat, we've defended the title like three times. We're like six and zero or seven and zero. By the time this airs, I might be 10 and zero. I don't even know. For those three, I feel like they've all got some serious drive, but honestly, after that really heartbreaking loss to the Patriots, I think Roka's gonna come back strong. And I think he's, he's, it's in his gut. I mean, much like Dan, much like Riley, but that might be added fuel to that uh, desire for him. So I think maybe Roka pulls it out. Nothing fuels you like a loss. True. Right. Right. Revenge. That's why I've been hungry my whole life. <laughs> so sad, Ken. Saddest interview ever. Hey, are you just here to cause trouble? No, I'm here to watch the best player in the game, Jeff Schneider, kick the shit out of Christian Harloff, the commissioner, supposedly. As long as he gets, uh, you know, as long as he doesn't get the easy questions that he's been getting lately, Schneider should win this. Uh, I'm not going to say it's going to be a knockout. It's going to come down to one of the final questions. Lord's not on this guy's side. You can't side. save him. <laughs> is, that, is that Katy Benign. Perry? Who's that, Katy Perry? I'm excited to play these guys. We are at the top of the mountain here. Everybody anoints the new champ off of one win. I'm nine wins, three losses. These guys are the best. I want to play the best. I'm ready. I'm having fun. It's a tough one. Roke is done. He's not winning. Merle's a loser. Uh, I hope Riley wins. He's a nice guy. Off camera as well. Is there a three way? Oh, you have to write. You know what? You just forget when you're not involved. Yeah. It's, it's just, everybody's so beneath you. I'm huh? semi interested because when you're a champion for that match, you only get one belt. We got two. We're tag team champs. One, two's better than one. It's it's math, Jen. Anything you're really dreading seeing on that wheel? Um, 
Yes, but I'm not going to tell you because what? I want to keep my weaknesses a secret. That's a true competitor right there. <laughs> well, you brought your Florida State hat today for good luck. I did. Luck, I'm so. actually wearing the first uh, outfit I ever wore on this road out. I'm taking oh. it old. It's going, we're going old school. We're going old school We're going school back to the beginning this. today. Yeah. It's the way it all happens. Well, yeah. good luck today. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm looking at Nerds Watch right now. You are. Absolutely. Rachel Cushing, Ken Knapsack, two of my favorite people in this world. They and are Cushing good. Cushing has been destroying people lately. Cushing is my favorite. She uh, she, she worked with me on schmoesno.com, still works there. Uh, to watch her be such a talented writer behind the scenes and then come out into the spotlight and kick ace is wonderful to see. As far as Snyder Harloff goes, that's a toss up. Snyder is damn good. Damn good. Oh, me? My Meet the Movie Press former co host. Love the guy. Look out for Snyder. That's what I'll say. I think he has a better chance than anybody to win this belt. But the commish, Christian Harloff, always, always a factor. Never count him out. That's why it's a toss up. I don't know who to pick. How are you feeling about Inner Geekdom? Inner Geekdom? I got Jay Jones. I got my yeah. boy Jeremy Johns. Jeremy Johns has been proving himself pretty. Uh, Pretty much he's my uh, brother in Star Wars. We always see each other and we do the Empire Strikes Back with Luke reaching for the lightsaber and the Wampa. And uh, I think he's got this. I think if he uh, remains cool, he's been brushing up on his trivia, on his geekdom. I think he's got this. All right. Well, yeah. Thank you so much, sir. Hope you have thank a you. wonderful match today and best of luck to you. Here's hoping. Let's, uh, hey, wheel, me and you. Come on. I love you. The wheel. You had my microphone. He said you were the last person who saw him with it. He's a liar. Uh, why would he lie to me? Because well, he's a liar. Where is my microphone? The last I saw it was in this room over here. Are you kidding me? That's where he put it. The guy's an idiot. Uh, why would he put a microphone in the closet? Because there's not enough room in the studio. It's for a microphone. There's Let's plenty of there's plenty of ask space him. in the studio. Ask him. Okay. Don't ask me, okay? Alright. It's gonna be right in that door. Right there. You know what? I'll go get it for you. No, 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 because you're going to try to pull something. I don't want you touching my mic. I will get it. Well, be careful. Yep. Well, it's right back there. It's, oh, see, I see it already. I don't see it anywhere. It's right there. Just, keep, just keep looking right Tom. there. Tom! Tom! Dummy. Christian Harlow. I'm John Cambia. John, this is something, man. We've been working up to this thing for a long time. It's been teased. There are some great matches here today. Four big matches, two number one contender matches, and two championships on the line. You know, since the motion picture camera was created in 1890, the entire history of cinema has been a countdown to this event. This is what it has all been about. Two titles on the line, two number one spots, incredible competitors across the board. This is going to be a day to be remembered. Some big superstars here in the world of the Schmodown. I mean, you, you, we've got a number one team contenders between the Nerds Watch and the potential Rookie of the Year, Rachel Cushing, who's just been on fire lately, playing against a, a very strong team in Rotten Tomatoes who had a big victory against yep. IGN. You've got the Inner Geekdom Championship. You've got the champion Hector Navarro making his way back, defending against Jeremy Johns, who has really been something here. Two straight victories. A little match, a number one contenders match for the singles match, a way that I don't know how I found myself into it. If you <laughs> ask the crowd, I guess that I fixed my way into it, and it's going to be both myself versus Jeff Snyder for the number one spot. That's one is one of the most interesting ones if you really like, take yourself out of it for a moment. You're looking at Jeff Snyder, who has been on an undeniable role. Sure, right now when you think about Jeff Snyder, you think about you know, team division because they are just dominating the team division like we have never seen a team 
team dominate. As a matter of fact, you could probably make the argument that this team, the Patriots, is dominating the division more than any singles competitor Absolutely. has, any inner geekdom competitor, and certainly any team. Well, just three days ago, they, they go ahead and they beat top 10, not TKO them, yep. and they beat Dan Merle's record, a former member of theirs in their squad. They have three title defenses, and Jeff Snyder, I'd be lying if it's not a little intimidating at this point. The guy is on fire. But we're here for one reason and one reason alone, and that is the triple threat match for the singles championship between three, only, the only three guys who have ever held the belt. You've got the former champion, the outlaw, John Rocha, who is determined to get it back. You've got dangerous Dan Merle, who is one of the most dominant champions of all time, and of course, the current champion, Mark Yodi Riley. You know, this match reminds me a lot if you go back in the day of the old WWE days when Chris Jericho shocked the world by beating Stone Cold Steve Austin and The Rock. Right. Nobody thought he had the chance, and that is Riley. That is position Mark Riley finds himself in right now. Did he luck into this belt? I'll tell you what, if he defends that title today, all those questions are answered. And before we get into the actual matches, a big shout out to Brian Ward. You see those designs right there, the collider coll collision. That is Brian Ward at his best. He's done a lot of great posters and everything, too. Thank you to Brian Ward. Um, all right, we got a lot going on. There's some stuff behind the scenes, and we're going to lead right into our match, the Nerds Watch versus Rotten Tomatoes. Making their Schmodown debut, Team Nerds Watch. We found ourselves today. We look deep down, and we know we belong as well. There is still a path to victory that will take us to the Patriots. We understand the path to victory, it's still out in front of us, but I'm telling you, our eye is on the prize. a championship match coming up and we are going to take on the winner and we will be the champions. I just checked my watch. It's quit messing around a clock. We are here to compete. We're not here for a sideshow. You're going to get your Faces smashed in. Collider Collision, Rachel, we are here. The Nerds Watch has finally arrived at a point of destiny. At 2 0, a lot of people are wondering why we're in a number one contenders match. Well, I'll tell you, today we're going to prove why we belong here. Hey, Sister Mary Rotten. Yes, Sister Mary Tomato. Ask me if you think that the Nerds Watch is going to win this match. Sister Mary Tomato, none of the above. Do you think the Nerds Watch is going to win this match? That's nonsense, Biot! We have fought our way here. We've played two great matches. We're ready to take on Rotten Tomatoes. I'm not underestimating them. They are great competitors, but it's the collision. It's the number one contender match. This is why we joined the league. We're here. We're here to win. We're here to move on to our goal, which is to take on those damn Patriots. When we beat the Nerds Watch, we are gonna strike down upon thee with great vengeance and furious anger and a very loose interpretation of Sam Jackson's speech in the great film Pulp Fiction. They will not take our trivia. I have a lot of respect for Greg Drake and Matt Atchity. I've seen them ply their trade for a very long time. There is no doubt, Rachel, like you said, they know their stuff. We know this is the final proving point. The Nerds Watch does not back down from challenges. We did not come this far to shrink away quietly into the night. Hey, Sister Mary Rotten. Yes, Sister Mary Tomato. What do you have to say to these jokers that we're going up against today that are obviously in league with the great double H-E-L hockey sticks? You know, the Lord teaches us mercy, mercy and teaches us forgiveness. And, but not and the, teaches us not charity speech, not the great power of speech though. but the lord said to kick some ass <laughs> yeah i think it's in deuteronomy <laughs> there's a 
lot going on right now with these two teams. Rotten Tomatoes and the Nerds Watch. This is tough. Rotten Tomatoes, this is the third time they have been in a, a shot to get a title shot against yeah. the Patriots here now. And they're going up against a tough new team in the Nerds Watch. What do you think? Well, look, when you're talking about a division that is dominated by names like the Patriots, Top Ten, the Schmoes, like you have some very high profile, the glitzy names, if you will. Very quietly, teams like Rotten Tomatoes, Nerd Watch, which has just burst onto the scene, they have been making statements in their matches lately. And these, either of these teams could pose a threat to that title down the line. Well, I'm ready to get going here. This is a big one, a great way to start off the collision. You ready to go? Let's do this. Tail of the tape, you've got Rotten Tomatoes. Their strengths are dramas and with gray Jeff Goldblum movies and amazing costumes. The Nerds Watch, you got classics, comic book movies, and Ken taking first minute break bathroom breaks. That's what it says. That's exactly what it says. Okay, so we are ready to go. John, I'm ready to get started. Let's get this thing going. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the movie trivia Shmona. <laughs> Introducing first. <laughs> representing the Nerds Watch with a record of two wins, no defeats. They are the number five ranked contenders, the Pit Boss, Ken, Knapsack, and Rachel, the Crusher, Cushing, the Nerds Watch! There he is, the big move there opens up, where he shoots the cameraman, <laughs> moves over, and there, there's the Crusher, there's the oh, Crusher, she drinks and knows things. She is there. She has become a superstar, John. I know. What's, what's she doing? What's she doing? She's oh, got she's two cars. Oh, she's got the crowd is going nuts right now. They're drinking. They're ready to go. They love the Nerds Watch. I know. With the meteoric rise that she's had, everybody's talking about Rachel. Let's not yeah. forget, Ken Mapsock is a champion a in this Wars league. He is champion. the Star Wars reigning champion at the moment. Yeah, they're looking at the library. Oh, she's got a tomato in her hand. She's oh, got a no. tomato what's in her going hand. on? What's she going to do? What's she gonna do? They're gonna look for her to crush it. She's gonna crush it. They're screaming to crush it. She crushed oh, it. She crushed oh, it. Oh, she crushed the tomato. She crushed the tomato. Rachel, the crushing, pushing, living to her name, performing. What a way to go there. Good start by the new team in the Nerds Watch. And their opponents. With a record of four wins, two defeats, and one knockout. They are the number three ranked contenders. <laughs> Great drink, Matt Anthony, Rotten Tomatoes. You will always have a degree of flair that comes out with Rotten Tomatoes. Ray Drake was born with flair, John. She absolutely was. Yeah. It, it, look, there's so much personality. Matt actually just is knocking the table away. around. Yep. Care. They're having a lot of fun. They knew they had to show up here, and they did, of course. What a way to begin the collision between two energetic teams. So we have our two teams. They are ready to go. Round number one, it works like this. The competitors are going to get eight questions each worth one point apiece. They will write it down on the board. When it is time for them to reveal their answer, they will reveal it to the camera and say it at the same time. They have 15 seconds to answer the question. Then you also have the JTE rule. That means you can only ask three times in the entire match to repeat the question. There's a challenge rule, meaning you can challenge something if you don't like the way it went. If it is overturned, you keep your challenge. If it is not, you lose your challenge. If you also have anybody scores eight points in the first round, you will get a bonus question worth one point. All right, Rotten Tomatoes, are you guys ready? Yes, yes. my son. We Amen. Are. <laughs> Amen. Nerds watch, are you ready? Hold on. Oh, mm. <laughs> okay, I drink and I know things. <laughs> By the old gods and the new, we are ready. <laughs> then let's get ready to schmoda! <laughs> All right, here we go. Three rounds in the team division. Question one in the category of comedy. In which film does Meryl Streep play a ruthless fashion ma magazine editor? All right, I everybody. can see you as a magazine editor and ruthless. <laughs> And as Meryl Streep. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's see. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, Matt Atchity. I hate to admit 
But the devil, he wears Prada. <laughs> that is correct. Pra Ken. The devil wears Prada. Correct, correct. Right. Yeah, the devil does wear Prada. Rachel Cushing. Mm. Devil wears Prada. There you go. Now we're on the four board. Four for four, right off the bat. All right, John. All right, guys, we move into your second question of round number one. Your question comes from the category of action adventure. What 2015 film starring Henry Cavill and Army Hammer was a big screen adaptation of a 60s television series? I thought we would have done well in that movie. I think so, too. You and I? Yeah, why not? Let's do it. We got the goods. Five, <laughs> four, three. Can you repeat the question? That's okay, yeah, that's, that's one. What 2015 film starring Henry Cavill and Army Hammer was a big screen adaptation of a 1960s TV series? Richard Cushing using one of the JTV rules. We have two left. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, please, Ken Knapsack. I saw that movie with Mark and Draco, The Man from Uncle. That is true. Correct. That is correct. Great Drake. Man from Uncle turns saints into sinners. Rachel Cushing. <laughs> Thought I could pull a Kalinowski. Couldn't get it. Didn't get it. Okay. Actually. It was The Man from Uncle. Rotten, Rotten Tomatoes, Tomatoes taking the lead here. Goes a, into rare, the lead. a rare miss by the they crusher. They draw first blood. All right. Here we go. Next category in the category of horror slash thriller. Jackie Earl Haley stepped into a reboot of which iconic horror franchise in a 2010 remake? 2010 had a remake. The whole year. <laughs> really? The whole year. Just one? Yeah. The whole entire year. This is a dude that does not get enough roles, in my opinion, Jackie Earl Haley. He will. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, please. And Gray Drake. Nightmare on Elm Street. Correct. Rachel Cushing. Nightmare on Elm Street. Matt. That Freddy Krueger's going to hell. <laughs> Nightmare on Elm Street. Ken Napsack. I put Freddy the Nightmare on Elm Street. All right, there you go. There so we go. Ken got it. All right, so here we go. So six, five. Rotten Tomatoes has not missed yet. All right, guys, we move into your fourth question, round number one, and that comes to you from the category of drama. Who plays the role of Winston the Wolf Wolf, in Pulp Fiction? Oh. All right. The Wolf Wolf. The Clark Wolf. Ken up there, he's, he's giving uh, it some thought. Missed opportunity that Clark Wolf's never come out as that. That is true. She really should. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, please. Rachel Cushing. Harvey Keitel. That's correct. Matt Ashley. Could not remember his name. All right, Mrs. <gasps> and Ken. Harvey Keitel. Correct. correct. Gray. Harvey Keitel, I will strike down upon thee. Gray Drake <laughs> has been perfect so far. She's the only one. Oh, Ken, uh, Ken has not missed either. So we both, Ken, Gray and Ken, both playing perfect. All right, next one. And we've tied it up. Category of famous directors. Famous directors is your next category. Who directed National Lampoon's Vacation? Holiday Road. Holiday Road. <laughs> I'm surprised how many people actually don't know the answer to this I know. one. This That's is why it's a great this question. This is a great about. question. Yeah. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. Matt Atchity. I hope it's Ivan Reitman. It's incorrect. Correct. Ten. Uh, John Landis. Incorrect. incorrect. Gray. No, Ivan Reitman. Incorrect. I said John Landis. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Harold Ramis. The late, great Harold Ramis. Oh, Harold no! Ramis. So the perfect rounds are gone for both teams. All right, here we go. Next category. All right, guys. Your next question comes to you in the category of new releases. What movie does Jake Gyllenhaal's character send a manuscript to his ex-wife, played by Amy Adams? Five. Four. Three. Two. One pens down, please. Ken Napsock. Uh, did you see that boxing movie he was in? The boxing movie was incorrect. <laughs> Gray, Gray Drake. It was Nocturnal Animals. That's correct. correct. Uh, Rachel. Ugh, my brain is not working. Oh, Rachel missed. Okay, and actually. The devil is in charge of Nocturnal Two Animals. Two point There we go. Here. That was big. Right. Amen. Next category in the category of fantasy sci-fi. Fantasy sci-fi. Which actor played the role of Beast for the first time in X-Men First Class? And five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. Gray Drake. It was Kelsey Grammer. That is incorrect. Uh, Rachel. Nicholas Holt. That's correct. Oh. Matt. Some kid That's who turned out to be named Nicholas Holt. <laughs> and Ken. I've always liked the name Taylor, which is a random <laughs> name. <laughs> but they did pick a point of Next Praise category. Be to Taylor. Next category. All right, guys, we move into your final question yeah. in round number one. 
This comes to you in the category of animated films. Charlie Day voiced Benny the Astronaut in what 2014 animated smash hit? Man, a little tougher the last couple of questions. I like it. And five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, please. And Rachel Cushing. I was trying for Monsters and Aliens. That's incorrect. Matt. Arlo. <laughs> I mean, the Lego movie. That's Sorry. correct. I know where you went with that. I know where you go with that. All right. Uh, Ken Napsok. It was a Lego movie. That's correct. And Gray. Oh, Monsters U, where you I got my degree. Oh. Right. Oh. Look at that. So we stay here. It is tit for tat. 10-9 after round one. What a round one <laughs> between <laughs> Rotten Tomatoes and the Nerds Lock. Round number two. Here's how it works. The contestants will spin the wheel. It will land on a category. If they don't like it the first time, they can spin again. Of course, unless it lands on opponent's choice, then they have to stick with it. They have to land on it the second time. If it lands on the second time, whatever it lands on, they have to stick with that. Also, it is worth two points apiece each question, unless they go to multiple choice. Then it is one point apiece. You can steal from your opponents. Six questions, 15 seconds to answer. Rotten Tomatoes, you have a one-point lead. Would you like to go first or second? Second. You're going to go second. second. All right. Nerds, watch. All right. Give it a good spin, please. All right. Here comes Ken. Yeah. Yeah. There it goes. Really it great look. luck lately on the wheel. And what's it going to go on? It's going to land, land on, on 80s, 80s movies. 80s films. 80s oh, this movies. is interesting. Will he go for Ken it? Ken has never seen a movie in the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Then let's go again. Uh, you're right, Christian. <laughs> I'd like to thank, <laughs> like to thank my mother for still not wanting me to see Top Gun. It's all Gremlins questions. <laughs> I thought since that's, I thought since that's when his uh, last date was, yeah. he might have stuck with it. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to land on Denzel Washington. Denzel Washington. Oh, Denzel Washington. <laughs> all Denzel movies from the '80s, right? <laughs> Denzel Washington from the '80s. Six questions in the world of Denzel Washington. All right. Detective Alonzo Harris is assigned a young officer to evaluate, claimed by whom in training day? Ethan Hawke. Correct, for two points. <laughs> All right. Who directed the 1996's The Preacher's Wife? Multiple choice. Is it A, Penny Marshall, B, Denzel Washington, C, Carl Franklin, D, Forrest Whitaker? Five, four, three. C? Incorrect. Can we hear the choices, choices again? once you can hear, yes. Penny Marshall, Denzel Washington, Carl Franklin, Forrest Whitaker. No, that's what they said was wrong. Five. Okay. Uh, we're going to say Forrest Whitaker. That's incorrect. Looking for Penny, Penny Marshall. Marshall. Penny Marshall. Right. Right. No right. steals there. All right. Here we go. The Lord did not help. Question three. Denzel Washington received his first Oscar nomination for acting in which film? Cry Freedom. That's correct for two. Yeah. Correct. Oh, big yeah. answer. Big. big. Real big. Big one. They needed that. That was good. Question four. Who plays the criminal mastermind that Denzel is trying to apprehend in mm -hmm. 2006's Inside Man? Clive Owen? That's correct. Correct. Another two-pointer. Right. Rachel, Rachel, the Rachel Crusher, the Crusher is back. All right, here we go. Question five. What veteran action director was at the helm for the 2006 sci-fi thriller Deja Vu? Tony Scott. Correct. Big for two on more a points. roll. Big, big. Your last question in the world of Denzel. Who plays Betty Shabazz, wife to Malcolm X, in 1992's Malcolm X? So Ken's got an idea what it might be. Yeah, yeah. Five? Multiple choice. Yeah. Is it A, Angela Bassett, B, Vivek A. Fox, C, Alfred Woodard, D, Holly Robinson? Let's go. A, Angela That's Bassett. correct. Correct. Absolutely. 18-10. Very solid round here by the Nerds Watch. And Rotten Tomatoes needs to catch up here by at least eight points. And Gray, please give it a good spin. <laughs> <laughs> there we the go. It's going around the board. Hoping to avoid that opponent's choice. They are, or hopefully getting spinner's choice. And it's going to land on, coming right around. I was missing it. And it's going to land on 
Sports, sports movies. movies. Sports movies. <laughs> they do not look happy. Oh. Lord's telling us to go again. <laughs> <laughs> going to spin away from sports movies. Grace. Here it goes again. And this is what they get. They're hoping to send a land on something big. Praying to that wheel. Praying to that wheel. It's going around, and it looks like it's going to land on. <laughs> Whoa! Oh! Oh! And it's 80s. 80s, movies. 80s movies. 80s movies. Matt Atchity right. happy like about that. that. Matt happy. Happy man. All right, Team Rotten Tomatoes, your first question in the category of 80s movies. In the film, At Close Range, who plays Sean Penn's absentee father? Multiple choice, please. All right, is it A, Christopher Walken, B, Robert Duvall, C, Gene Hackman, D, Martin Sheen? Mm. He's Five. in every movie, I'm gonna say Gene Hackman. It's incorrect. It's chance for steal. Duval? Incorrect. We were looking for Christopher Walken. Oh, wow. They were hoping to get a, a Robert Duval win by the Patriots. <laughs> right. You right. haven't seen that. There before. we go. All right. Your second question in the category of 80s films. In the movie Trading Places, the partners of the firm Lewis worked for had a wager concerning both Lewis and Billy Ray. What was the value of their wager? Their standard wager, one dollar. Correct for two <laughs> points. Correct. There you go. 18-12 here as Rotten Tomatoes starts to make a move. Raise. Your third question. In Ghostbusters, Bill Murray equates mass hysteria to human sacrifice and what? Dogs, Dogs and, and cats, cats living, living together. together. <laughs> there you go. Two Correct more points. Two more points. Rotten Tomatoes here. Church does not condone. Showing Church what they're doing. Condone. Rotten Tomatoes doing a good job here. Question number four. Your next question. What was the nickname of Sean Astin's character Clarence in 1987's Like Father, Like Son? Deep Multiple cut. choice, please. All right. Was it A, Trevor? <laughs> B, Trigger. C, Digger. D, Ringer. <laughs> I'm going to go with uh, Sean Astin, right? Sean yeah. Astin or yes. Sean Austin? Astin. 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 Makes a difference. Huge difference. Uh, we're going to go with Trigger. And you would be correct. Oh, oh my God. Oh. Yes. There you go. Question number five. In Back to the Future 2, Dude. the Chicago... <laughs> The Chicago Cubs win the World Series in the future timeline that Marty and Doc Brown visit. From what city was the team that they beat from? Wow. You gotta know Back to the Future to know this yeah. one. Well, not necessarily. Uh, Five. Can we get a um, multiple choice, please? Sure. Were they from A, New York, B, Boston, C, Detroit, D, Miami? Miami. Correct for yeah, one there you point. Go, one point. Done. Your final question in round number two. Who appeared as a singing waitress, Mrs. Murphy, in The Blues Brothers? Come on. That would be, and we all need to respect, Aretha Franklin. <laughs> Correct there for two go. points. Tie game. What a match so far. Tie game after that. <laughs> Tip for tat. Look at that. We go to the third round now, and it works like this. The teams will get to choose between three numbers from 1 to 20. The first one will be worth two points. Second one will be worth three. The third one worth five points. Once they hear their category, they can choose which team member gets to two, which gets to three, and then they confer on the five if it comes down to that. But it is a tie game here. So we're going to start with the higher ranked team, Rotten Tomatoes. You guys are higher ranked. Please pick your three numbers. Five. And my favorite song, 316. <laughs> so you want 5, 3, and 16? Yes. All right. Yes. <laughs> all right. Um, all right. So Nerds Watch. Seven. Seven. Eight. And 13, Chief. 13. Seven, eight, and 13. Again, because Nerds Watch is the lower ranked team, we're going to start with Nerds Watch. Nerds Watch, for your two point question, you chose a category of 80s. Who's going to take the two pointer? I'll take it. <laughs> You'll take it. Okay. All right, Ken Napsok, what is the name of the actor who voices the spaceship in Flight of the Navigator? Paul Rubin. Two points for the Nerds Watch. Big shot. We bounce back to Rotten Tomatoes here. 
on question number five, John. All right, for your two point question, you selected the category of comic book movies. Who's taking that? I'll Matt. take it. All right. Sister Mary Rotten will. <laughs> for two points, who plays Professor Arnold, who is kidnapped at the outset of the movie in Kingsman, The Secret Service? I would love to say none of your business, but that is the legendary Mark Hamill. Correct for two, two points. points. Tied it up oh, again. Man. So he bounced back now to the Nerds Watch. What a match so far. We get the next category. Rachel, you're getting the category of fantasy sci-fi. Fantasy sci-fi. Who plays Hugh Jackman's love interest in the sci-fi film Real Steel? Evangeline Lilly. For three points. Wow. <laughs> For three points. Wow. This 20, is going down 20. to the wire. Here we That's go now. Pull. Back nice. to Rotten Tomatoes. All right, Rotten Tomatoes, for your three-point question, you chose the number three. That gives you the category of crime films. Who played Tom Hanks' character's son in the movie Road to Perdition? Uh... Sean Astin. <laughs> <laughs> That's incorrect. We were looking for Tyler Hoechlin. All right, Tyler Oh, Hoechlin. of course. <laughs> <laughs> That's a tough one. All right, so then it comes down to this. Rotten Tomatoes needs to hit their five-point question, or Nerds Watch will win the game. If they hit it, it bounces back to Nerds Watch, and Nerds Watch will have to hit their five-pointer. John, let's get that five-pointer. Your five-pointer to stay alive in the match. You chose the number 16. That gives you the category of Oscar movies. And can we confer on this? Five yes, you can. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. In the five Thank point, God. you can confer. Bless you. Screen legend Christopher Plummer finally won his first Academy Award for a supporting role in what 2011 film? Beginners. Correct for Rotten five tomatoes. <laughs> what a battle here. So Nerds Watch is forced to answer their five-pointer. If the Nerds Watch hits the five-pointer, they will be challenging the Patriots for the team titles. If they miss it, Rotten Tomatoes will be challenging for the titles in August or September. Here is the final question. You guys chose dance movies. <laughs> Ten dance specialty. Movies. Ten dance specializes dance in this category. Movies. Praise Jesus. All right. In which Rob Reiner film does Daphne Zuniga play John Cusack's love interest? We have two repeats left. Five, four, three. I'd like to have the question repeated, sir. All right, that's two that you've used so far. In which Rob Reiner film does Daphne Zuniga play John Cusack's love interest? I like how they're not even pretending to listen to you now. Well, they need it. They need it. Yeah, absolutely. Five. It's a good strategy. Four. Three. One more time. <gasps> Using their last one. In which Rob Reiner film does Daphne Zuniga play John Cusack's love interest? Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Better off dead. And your winners! Great treat! <laughs> Matt Anthony! Ryan Tomatoes! We were looking for The Sure Thing. The Sure Thing was the name of the film. The Sure Thing. Ryan Tomatoes. <laughs> Celebrating at the Eating table. Ken Napsock and Rachel Cushing. What a match. Down to the wire. That was unbelievable. Man. That was a battle, John. That is what this game is all about. Final question of the two greatest words in competitive sports at all. This That was fantastic. And a game right down to it, a true five-point question. It was a tough one. They thought about it. They used the right strategy. They stretched out as much time as they could. But they just weren't able to pull that one off. So Rotten Tomatoes going up against the Patriots. There you go. OK, so we're going to bounce back to Emma Fife now, who is standing with both the Nerds Watch and Rotten Tomatoes. Here we go. Hey guys, actually it's gonna be yours truly, Grace Hancock, because I'm a real professional, unlike some people. Who will be damned. Who will be damned. Welcome Movie Trivia Schmodown fans to the Collider Collision. I am here with our champions from the first match, Rotten Tomatoes, congrats. Yeah, guys. my cup running over, bitches. That yeah. is right, we are gonna get- So over, okay guys. 
You defeated IGN. You're here today. That was a really, really close match yep. pretty much the whole way through. Straight to hell we sent him. <laughs> yeah. Heaven's on our side. Exactly. I see what you did there. Were you guys ever nervous at any point? I mean, that five-point question towards the end was... I mean, we were all a little nervous. I was nervous. I, I, I will say I, I had a little bit of doubt, a little a little anxiety, but I, we prayed. Like him in seminary school. We prayed. We prayed, and the Lord took care of us. Yeah. You know what? This is one of the first matches where I've ever felt really serene during yeah. it. Like, I, I completely smashed that first round. Well, I nearly did perfectly. And I think some of that... vanity is a sin, so forget everything. But also, like some that. of that vanity does... I mean, I'm sorry. The serenity. Some of that serenity, admittedly, comes from the Valium. <laughs> right, right. That's totally agree. I mean, Nerdswatch is a pretty... They're a formidable opponent. I mean, you guys were pretty toe-to-toe, -to -toe, but you guys came through. We oh, did. You know, beautiful. they they smashed that tomato, and <laughs> they we had to pay back. It was very That's messy and very dramatic. I enjoyed it a lot. Don't nobody smash a tomato, exactly. but rotten tomatoes. Tomatoes are the Lord's fruit. Do not smash them. All right, or you so too will be smashed and smited. Is and it smote. smote? I think it's smote. I don't like to be smote. Um, okay, so guys. I don't know grammar. Next, oh, you guys have my boys. Look at this, Mike. Oh, my God. Look oh, look. Well, hello. Look at these people. Hey, thanks, guys, for carrying in yeah. my new accessory. Can I just say, do we even have to do this match? Can we put, like, a computer simulation and just know what the odds are going to be? Because it's on paper, they're not going to beat us. Yeah, God was on your side today because you definitely got lucky. I know. We, uh... We actually just want the shiny stuff, guys. I, all this blah, blah, blah is, like, not interesting at all. I'm just going to keep drinking my beer. I mean, are you, are you guys intimidated to be going up against my team? We're, my boy? we're six. Team? I had such a high opinion of you until just that moment. Oh. Matt, how's your back? Is it hurt carrying gray? Is your back okay? Because, I mean, you're carrying, you're carrying dead weight here. You know, my back hurts no more than your asses are going to hurt when we <laughs> kick them. Oh, my God. I'm just going to say that. No, Look, I, you guys are cool. You guys have had a good run. Oh, my God. And, you know, I'm sorry. We're going to we're gonna come and we're just going to slay. Well, listen, I'm glad that you guys found God today because you're going to need him when you when you play us. That's actually true. Everyone needs God. Amen. You better actually join the priesthood or something, because that's the only chance you got. You know, I, I recommend uh, these get modified into floral patterns so that they match my whole floral vibe, yeah. uh, because that's his what's going to happen. His shirt's in his underwear. Exactly. That's a weird thing but to know about your boss. Seriously, you guys are all about making jokes and wearing costumes yeah, and stuff. So we're funny. about winning. We're, de we're focused and determined. I, so uh, I think we've we'll given see. them enough time. People actually care. So let's oh, good I, to see look, you guys. I'll but, catch you but soon. Just, yes, you. I, I want to leave you with one thing. Jeff's right. We are about making jokes, and we're going to make jokes out of them. All right. Well, we will see to be determined. Again, guys, I'm Grace Hancock. I'm going to be here all day for Collider Collision. Hey, guys, and here I am now with the Nerds Watch, our unfortunate losers from today. Okay, guys, this is your first loss. That first round was a little rough. Rach, my friend, you kind of froze. What happened? I did. I, I, I've heard it happens. I'm surprised it hasn't happened to me sooner, but the fact that I did not get nocturnal animals, the fact that I did not get the man of uncle, those are going to haunt me. They really are, especially in a big match like this. Um, I am proud of the way we came back in round two. Like, I, I think we made a match of it. We got really close despite, you know, my uh, my unfortunate lapses in round one. But, yeah, uh, I'm going to have to go back to the drawing board and, and find a way to, uh, to not blank like that in the future. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you guys definitely came back. It got pretty close there for a while. Ken, how are you feeling? You were pretty on fire that first round. Thank you. I feel good, and and I, I I hear a little bit of an attitude underneath your tone here. I, I feel it. I know I know you're a good person deep at heart. I know you've been been trapped with this lion's den, and and uh, oh, much like trapped with the undefeated champs. Mm. I understand. I understand. You you're lost in the lights, and and that's what we're about. <laughs> We're about bringing oh. back uh, goodness and heroes, and, and a lot of people don't like to hear that, I understand, but that's what it is. And much like Rotten Tomatoes, I, I believe in the Lord and I'll be praying for you, all right? Oh. Um, I have well, thank you, Ken. I'll be praying for your next match for sure. We are looking forward to that next match. We understand, first of all, I have all the faith in the world in Rachel the Crusher Cushing. She is a dominant force in singles, in her geekdom, and we are consider ourselves one of the top teams. We are going to look ourselves in the mirror because sometimes that's what you have to do. You have to look at yourself in the mirror and ask questions. Did we get too far too fast? Did we believe our own hype? Those are questions your boys don't ask themselves. And they keep taking that hubris and riding that wave into the darkness. We, and look at it. 
Look at these. Oh, wow. here they come I again. Can't, I can't stand by after watching Rachel carry this team all the way up to almost a title shot. And then for you to just keep talking like you're good at this game. I can't do it anymore. I can't stand by and watch. You know, I'm kind of loving that this is kind of becoming like the Lion's Den interview takeover today. I'm sorry. I'm a fan. First of all, how many times have you made love to that belt today? <laughs> all right, let's just get that. Out. Way more than you have because you'll never have one. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I seek love and reality, sir. I seek love and reality. But congratulations. Yeah. Congratulations. You are talented. But we're not done here. And I still... No, you're done. That's what happens when you lose. Uh, oh, no. This is what I'm talking about, Ms. Hancock. This is what I'm talking about. I mean, the attitude's been working pretty well for us so far. Well, listen, Ken, let's... Yeah, when Jeff's let's, next Let's to lose Rachel now. for a little while. No, no, let's have I'm a one-on-one -on -one match team. so I can show everybody how much Rachel's oh. carrying this team. I'm no. sick of you talking and riding her coattails. I want to I want to fight you. I've always been better at movie trivia with you. It's the one thing I can hold over you. You may have a car, Thank you. but I have the movie trivia. That's right. That's right. You finally met that. You're challenging me one on one. Did yes. you did you see the first round, my friend? Did you see the first round? I scored 22 points on the sideline. I scored just as much as your whole team together. You, first, How many did you score? You're the not, only thing you got was Paul Rubens. That's the only thing I'm mildly impressed by you're, in that whole match. You, first of all, that was pretty impressive. I have not, to give you you're that. You're not good at math. Otherwise, you'd factor a car payment into your budget. All right. That's so. Let's 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 accept this right now. And you're going to see a new side of me, JT. You're going to see a new side. I've been quietly on the sidelines watching you. I've been in the shadows watching the doubt grow in your brain. And if I have to take you on one-on-one -on -one just to have you know that when you sit up there, it is Snyder that is carrying you, oh, what a I will do it. Take I accept it. Mark it down. Yes, Tell your you. bosses, the okay. ones that actually sign your checks, not the ones that pull you into matches against your own free will. I accept this challenge right now. I accept this one-on-one. Thank God. with you, JT. Okay. Thank God. Tell you what, after I beat you and you have to retire from the down, I'll hire you as my personal driver just to keep you something to do. <laughs> I don't want you to be too sad. You, sir, I'm aren't, done with aren't good I'm enough to fit in my don't Camry. Don't waste any more of your time. Your ego could not fit in my Camry, sir. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, <laughs> you heard it here. Let's check in with the next match. Very interesting that uh, that Emma Fife Emma's not was around. on. I got a text halfway through, and and the text read that Emma Fife says I am not coming. Deal with it. <laughs> that doesn't. That's very. Doesn't sound like her. Doesn't sound like her, but that's what she says. Okay, so Grace Hancock, I guess, will be doing the interviews for the rest of the of the time here. But now it's time for the Inner Geekdom Championship. Hector Navarro, Jeremy Johns, and what a journey it's been to get here. We're going to show you right now. Who played Lois's fiance, Richard White, in the film Superman Returns? James Martin. And your winner! Wow. And the new Inner Geekdom Champion of the World, Robert Meyer Barnett! I think people should take me on now. I think it's time that I get my due. There is no one anywhere that can take me down. And your winner, and the new <laughs> Inner Geekdom Champion of the World, Hector Nightmare You can throw anybody you want at me. I'm going to hold on to this thing for years until finally somebody has to like forcibly retire me to be like, okay, Hector, we need other people to play, because I'm going to be holding on to this bad boy for a long time. That's right, folks. I'm back. And all the awesome, spectacular, nerdy glory. This is actually just me. I've shed the layers of bullshit. I didn't win last time, and I'm fine with losing to questions I don't know the answers to. Not as much okay with losing to questions I know the answers to, but give the wrong and dumb fucking answer. So I, I need a mulligan. As we say in Magic the Gathering, I'm doing a mulligan. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you done it! Jeremy Johns! Wow! Jeremy Johns. Jeremy Johns is an inconsequential internet personality. One million followers? Who cares? Here's the thing about Robert Meyer Burnett being the champion. He's the former champion. So really, we're on the same level. And your winner! He's facing Hector for the championship! The Joker, Jeremy Johns! Jeremy Johns does it again!
Hello, my awesome Tacularites! Welcome to the Movie Trivia Schmodown Inner Geekdom Championship! Listen, I've done these big events before. Uh, it's tough to shake me. I'm feeling pretty confident. Uh, I know what I'm capable of. I know what my strengths are. I know what my weaknesses are. So I feel good. I'm gonna have fun. All the respect in the world for Hector Navarro. I've met him a few times. He's always been super nice to me. He's, uh, he's always just been a great dude. And there's a reason he has that belt. The dude knows his shit. So it's going to be a clash of the titans today. That's if I'm a titan. I feel like it's more of a David and Goliath scenario. You know, that dude has the belt. I know why he has the belt. He deserves to have the belt. At the end of the day, we're going to see if I deserve to have the belt. I'm going to be real with you. Jeremy, uh, not very impressive that first time. <laughs> not. But since then has become very impressive and he's just a real nice nice boy so I am looking forward to going up against a nice guy for once just a nice guy just a nice we're just gonna have a nice good time the last time when Robert Meyer Burnett spun the wheel I used the force and the force brought it to opponent's choice opponent being me apparently I have the force I believe the force is on my side today but we'll see we won't know until we're out there and here's what's gonna happen it's gonna be a good show it's gonna be a fun time we're gonna learn a lot about one another and we're gonna walk away better people but I'm just gonna keep holding on to this. That's gonna be the difference. That's gonna be the difference. In fact, here's what's gonna happen. I'm guessing that I'm gonna get the category Marvel, Marvel Cinematic Universe, and I'm just gonna clean it. I'm just gonna sweep it, sweep it up, sweep, 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 and then that's it. Or huh, maybe I'll get DC Extended Universe, and then I'll clean it, sweep, 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 sweep it up. Cleaned it. Clean it. Every time Booker T has made a video, he has said, I believe Jeremy Johns will win. He's had faith in me. When King Booker has faith in you, you gotta take that as something. Hector, I have all the respect in the world for you. There's a reason you have that belt. But in the ends, in a world where there are a lot of villains in this movie trivia schmodown, I've always been one here to have fun and be one of the good guys, and I gotta prove, good always wins. and we're back heading into the highly anticipated Inner Geekdom title match. And I'm going to be calling the main event a little bit later, but Christian right now got a little bit of business to take care of. I do have a little bit of business. Thank you, John Campia. We'll see him back in a little back bit. Back in a few minutes. John Campia, ladies and gentlemen. All right, so as John leaves and we get ready for the Inner Geekdom Championship, before we do that, something happened at Star Wars Celebration. It was a big event. It was something really special that happened. We did a live schmodown from, from the event itself, and a lot of you guys came out and celebrated. And what an event it was. John Campia, Jeremy Johns, Jenny Nicholson, Sam Witwer, and Ken Knapsack all went toe-to-toe -to -toe in a Star Wars battle, and Ken Knapsack emerged the champion of the Star Wars division here. And what I would like to do is not only announce my co-host for this next match, I would also like to present to you guys the Star Wars Movie Trivia Schmodown Champion, Ken the Pit Boss Knapsack! As Ken goes to sit down, and again, you can catch out, you know, this is a good time to plug Ken's show every Thursday, the Inside Schmodown on Facebook. Um, I will also, Ken, before we get going here, first of all, great match just now. I know it was a little tough, a little hard. I, I actually, I know exactly how you're going to feel in just a little bit here. But one thing that we didn't get a chance to do, mm -hmm. you see Hector Navarro's got that big shiny belt over there. Yeah. Mark Riley's running around with a nice belt. Those Patriots, yeah. JTE sleeps with that belt. He does literally, yeah. Well, now... JTE was mistaken, my friend, when he yep. said that you don't have a belt. Mm. You do. It is the oh Star Wars Championship belt oh my that gosh. is now invested to you. You are the Star Wars Champion. That was done by our good buddy RB3. Robert Butler III made that tremendous belt really? for you. And that is the belt right there, the Star Wars Champion Ken Knapsack with the belt. You know, all my life I've wanted to win a championship belt, Christian. Uh, I knew I couldn't get in the ring, but I can get in the trivia ring, and this okay. means a lot. It especially means a lot that RB3 made it. RB3, the next Hawaiian pizza is on me. All right, so there you go. All right, so the Star Wars champion is going to join me, and man, is he going to join me for a match. As you guys saw as leading up, both Jeremy Johns and Hector Navarro, they are going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. A lot of nice words, as you, as you saw in the promo there, from both of these guys. It's not like when Hector Navarro was going with Robert Meyer Burnett, and same thing with Jeremy Johns. This is about, this is something different. This is just to show who is the best. They faced off once in the Schmodown Spectacular yeah. back in December, but it was, I, I think it was really before Jeremy found his footing. 
Absolutely, and Jeremy Johns is, uh, don't let his ferret-like behavior confuse you. <laughs> he can focus when he wants to. He really, really is a nerd at heart. He's not going to deny that, but this is where it really shines. He's not just a movie reviewer. He's not just this personality that's built up over the years. This is a guy who has hot toys staring at him from, from, from a shelf every night he goes to bed. This is his arena. Hector Navarro is a icy, cold, steel-like champion. He is confident and quiet. And, and deserves this belt. He didn't even want to bring the belt out. He's, yeah. I said to him, I said, oh, you forgot you have the belt. He said, no, it's on the table. I said, do you want to put it on your shoulder? He's like, no, it's on the table. Right. And I was like, all right, he just, he just does, he wants to put it there. That's exactly where he wants to put it. So, and before we get into the actual match, one other thing that Jeremy's really good in is a lot of things that you don't see with right. talking about this inner geekdom. You want to hear him talk about Star Wars? Yeah. You want to hear him talk about comic books? And you want to see about the comedy? Well, then you check out his show on Verizon Go 90, it is the Awesome Tacular Show, and Jeremy has a bit of that, a little promo for you right now. Hello, my Awesome Tacularites. Welcome to another episode of Awesome Tacular, the show that lives up to its name. Truly. So here we are. We're about to learn about my girlfriend. Tell us about Harley Quinn. Hey, hey there, there, friend. friend. We're, We're backseat back drivers, drivers lending, lending a hand, hand getting, getting you through this La La Land. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm throwing rocks at you. Here we go. Got it! Mark. Deepwater Horizon. Whoa, yeah! If you actively choose to eat at a movie theater, bye, you're gonna die in about 20 years. Nice knowing you. We see The Force Awakens. Finn, at this point, is with the First Order. He goes and turns. There was this floating severed hand in space, and then that hand made me. So I guess I'm a clone? One of the things we're talking about is how are they gonna tie that into the movies now mm -hmm. with the vision? Is his actually the soul gem? Are they gonna take that from him? You just have to follow the directions. Girl, you know who are good cooks? Serial killers. <laughs> Jeremy, you're gonna guess? Yeah, Kill Bill. Nope. Uh, Mark, Back to the Future. Nope. Ooh, burn to a crisp. You know what that's like, right? Oh my God. Luke, oh my God, hey, look who it is. It's your dead husband. And that's what makes it all awesome tech. You see what he can do. You see what the man's ready to do. He has been around the internet space for a long time. Hector Navarro has been the champion now for a little bit. I'm ready to go. Ken, are you ready to go? I'm getting my documents ready. Got my scorecard going. Christian, let's let's get it going. You got the tail of the tape here, Ken. Uh, I do have the tail of the tape. Jeremy John's his strengths include Star Wars, Lord of the Rings. All the things that normally wouldn't be used to your advantage in a normal society are his strengths here. Hector Navarro is known world round, world round as a comic book expert. DC, Marvel, doesn't matter. And he's pretty well rounded in the other categories. He is a <laughs> titan, He's a titan in this game. He sure is. Uh, all right, so I'm ready to go if you're ready to go. I am ready, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the Movie Trivia Schmodown! Five rounds for the Inner Geekdom Championship of the World. Introducing first, the challenger. Representing Awesome Tacular with a record of two wins, one defeat. He is the Joker, Jeremy John! Oh, there he is, Jeremy. He's ready. He's ready to go. He's determined. I, mean, I have talked to Jeremy. I've never seen him as focused. He's been yep. studying. He's reviewing the Harry Potter movies over the last month and a half, two months. Yep. He's ready to go. He has been sleeping in that bed sheet since the 80s, and now it is with him in these big matches. Cool. Calm, relax. There are signs in the audience for John's. There's a lot of stuff going on. And his opponent. Let's go, Hector! Representing Geek and Sundry with a record of one win, one defeat. He is the undisputed movie trivia showdown inner geekdom champion of the world hector the nightmare Navarro. hector the champion is he, ready the belt waiting for him he belt waiting for him hector's a great guy man just so is jeremy this yeah. is going to be a fun spirit of competition between respected rivals totally agree all right so 
Round number one is going to work like this. 12 questions in round number one. The competitors are going to write their answers down. They are going to reveal it when it is time. One point apiece. 12, again, you have the JTE rule. You can ask three times during the match to repeat. You have a challenge rule. If you want to challenge once and it is overturned, you keep your challenge. If not, you lose it. All right, here we go. Guys, Are you the champion, are you ready? Yes. The challenger, are you ready? Sure am. Then let's get ready to Schmoda! <laughs> Five rounds for the championship. Here we go. Ken, you go first. Question one, category is Star Trek. Star Trek, who played the alien scavenger Jala in Star Trek Beyond? Man. You ever seen a Star Trek movie? I, I absolutely have seen a Star Trek movie. You like Star Trek? Yeah, I like the one with the whales. No, you don't. I do. You're lying. I like whales. Five, four. Can you repeat the question, please? It's one for Hector. Sure. Who played the alien scavenger Jayla in Star Trek Beyond? Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, please. The champion. Couldn't think of it. Okay, Jeremy. The mummy? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the, 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 we can't give you the point, She's but, in it. but yes. Uh, Sophia Butella. Yeah, Sophia Butella is the answer. But you What's her name? Sophia, Sophia Butella. Right. Butella. Tif Tiffany Smith. Sophia Butella. All right. Next question in the category of Lord of the Rings. By what name do the Gondorians commonly call Gandalf other than the White Rider in Return of the King? And other than Gandalf. Correct. Right. Well, shit. Have you ever fallen <laughs> off a horse? I might have. Yeah. Thank you. I might other have. than Gandalf? All right. Other than Gandalf. I don't know what's happening anymore. You know what? It's the start of a great long event, Christian. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, please. Jeremy. It's a man of many names. I believe Mithrandir? That's correct. correct. Hector. Old Man Magneto? <laughs> Incorrect. <laughs> so Jeremy John's taking the lead there. Behind the scenes. It's I behind the old scenes. Man All right, here we go. Count. Question three, category M, C, U. What kind of birds did Hulk scare away when he crashed through the roof of the warehouse in The Avengers? Man, that one, that's something. Have you ever fallen through a roof of a warehouse? After the way I've been reading questions today, I'd say yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Five, four, three, two, one. Hector Navarro. City Pigeons. Correct. Correct. Jeremy. Pigeons. Correct. Correct. All right, 2-1 there. All right. Question number four in the category of Harry Potter. Who played Professor Phileas Flitwick, Charms Master at Hogwarts in the Harry Potter series? I'm not sure, but I think Flitwick is a sexual position. I, I just, come on. Five, four, Three, two, one. Jeremy Johns. Warwick Davis? Correct. Hector. <sighs> Warwick Davis. Correct. Wow. Three, two. Battling. This is why it's a championship match. Absolutely. Question five. The category is Star Wars. What was the name of Darth Sidious's master? Hmm. I own five cloaks. You do? Yeah. I don't. I, I, ten, maybe? What colors? Oh, all black. I'm a Sith. You need full of shit. Three, two, one. Pens down. Hector Navarro. Darth Plagueis. Correct. Right. Jeremy. The Wise. That's correct. Darth <laughs> Plagueis, the Wise. All right, there you go. Four, we'll three. accept that. Four. All right, next question. Category of Marvel films. Marvel films. In 2002 Spider-Man, how does Norman Osborn slash the Green Goblin meet his end? Willem Dafoe. Hmm. Good old Willem. Yeah. Not William. Willem. Willem. Yeah. That's a fact. You're stating fact. Yeah. Five. Yeah. Four. Three. Two. One. Pens down, please. Jeremy Johns. Like in the comics, his glider impales him. That's correct. Right. Hector. Godspeed, Spider-Man. That's it. Got it. <laughs> yeah, but That's got correct. It. He's got it. All right. <laughs> Here we go. Next one. Question seven. Category is DC. What actor received top billing for 1978's Superman? Good old soups. Look yeah. how we were writing it before he actually finished it. Yeah, but I when hope you... we're right. Yes. <laughs> yep. Ready? Five, four, three, 
two, one. Pens down, please. Um, and Hector. I must save Krypton. That's correct. <laughs> Brando is correct. Uh, what do you got? Godfather, Marlon Brando. That That's is correct. correct. All right. Krypton. Krypton. Ken, I haven't heard a good groan from the audience in a while. So mm. in the category of the DCEU, who plays Steve Trevor in Wonder Woman? <laughs> I don't write the questions, I just mispronounce them. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. Jeremy. James T. Kirk. Chris Pine. Thank you. Hector. I got the same thing. Nice. Can you, can you? Yeah. Yeah, there you go. All right. <laughs> Question nine, category back to Star Trek. Who landed the final blow that sent Kruge into a sea of lava in Star Trek Three: The Search for Spock? Can you repeat the question, please? Sure thing. And am I, get, am I pronouncing that right? Any from the audience? Yes. Okay. Good. <laughs> Who landed the final blow that sent Kruge into a sea of lava in Star Trek III, The Search for Spock? I believe that's Hector's second JTE used, right? It is. Okay. I got one more? Yeah, one more. Okay, great. All right. And five, four, three, two, one. Hector. Captain James T. Kirk. That's, that's correct. correct. Jeremy. I have had enough of you as he kicks him in the lava. He's also got it, too. Okay, so we got 8-7. Jeremy Johns with a one-point lead here. 8-7. All right, question number 10. In the category of Lord of the Rings, what race of being is Treebeard? Do you know that? Would you have known that? Uh, no, no, but uh, I have fallen out of trees. Did, that, did you really? It's a theme today. Okay. Five, four, three, two, one. One, Jeremy. He's an Ent. That is correct. Hector. Just like Groot, an Ent. There you go. All right. <laughs> Two questions left here in round one with the challenger with a one-point lead. Question 11, category is MCU. How old was Tony Stark when he took over Stark Industries? Man, that's a tough one. Yes, I'm I would know. glad I'm not competing in this one. Yeah. Five. Four, three, two, one. Hector Navarro. 18 years of age. It's incorrect. Jeremy? 20? Incorrect. incorrect. Look at the 21. Damn 21. It. All right. Old enough to drink. All right, your mm. final question. Your final question in the world of Harry Potter. Harry Potter. In Harry Potter, what are the names of the Weasley twins in the Harry Potter saga? What are the names of the twins? Hmm. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. Jeremy. Fred and George. That's correct. correct. Hector. Dominic and Brian. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. <laughs> Incorrect. Jeremy Johns taking a two-point lead now as we round number two. Round number one is in the books. Big there round. you go. 10-8. Big round. Big round. The challenger has a two-point lead here going into round number two, but it's far from over. It is absolutely far from over. <laughs> round number two. Works like this, the competitors will spin the wheel. If they don't like what they get the first time, they can spin a second time. Four questions in the inner geekdom world. They get two points apiece. Unless it goes to multiple choice, then it is one point. You can steal from your opponent in this round. 15 seconds to answer the question. Jeremy, you are in the lead here by two. Would you like to go first or second? I would go first. I'm going to get this out of the way. Go ahead. All right. Good spin. Good spin. Good spin. Good spin. Good spin. I'm using the force. Marvel movies. Marvel movies. That's just that's Marvel, not MCU, it's right? Marvel movies. I'm reading your face. This? I'm gonna take it. Why not? Taking it. All right. Here you go. All right. He's gonna take Marvel movies. Before Ken, everything for was linked in a universe, right, yeah. there was How Marvel. Uh, you get four questions gotcha. here. Okay. Or two points apiece. Two okay. points. And there is multiple choice. There's multiple Correct. choice. All right. Remind me of that, because I'm going to forget. All right. All right. You got the category of Marvel movies. Question one. In X-Men Days of Future Past, in the future timeline, who does Logan injure with his claws? Um, He injures Kitty Pride. That's correct. For two, two points. points for Jeremy Johns. All right. Next one. 
Question two. In 2003's Daredevil, Matt Murdock was blinded by what? Uh, do you need specifics, or can I just say, like, toxic chemicals splashed in his eyes? We'll accept that. Toxic Absolutely. chemicals Absolutely. splashed in his eyes. <laughs> All right. Question number three. Three is the number of the question, and the question is three. In Logan, what animal does Charles compare Laura to? Ooh. This is a, you're a, yeah. I got to go multiple choice on this one. A, a hawk. B, a lioness. C, a raptor. D, a bobcat. Can I hear the choices again? One more time, yeah. A, a hawk. B, a lioness. C, a raptor. D, a bobcat. Lioness? That's correct. One point. Whoa. All right. Okay. And your final he was explaining question. the foot claw. Yeah, oh, foot yeah because claw. of the feet, right. Yeah. It's an evolutionary right. All right, so final, final question. Final question, final question, category Marvel. What does Deadpool say is the, quote, old-fashioned way of doing things? Can I need multiple choice? I hear you laughing. <laughs> I'm going to need multiple choice on this one, so he only gets one point. <laughs> a, with two fists and a music beat to punch to. B, with two guns and plenty of ammo. C, with two swords and maximum effort. D, with two brass knuckles and a woman to go home to. It's maximum effort that's standing out to me, so that one, see? See, that is correct. One Jeremy point. John's having a nice second oh. round here. So now the champion will spin. All right. Hector, go ahead. Good spin by the champion here. It was okay. Yeah. Yeah. It was all right. All right. It, it, it moved on. It was I don't want to break the thing. Physics. Land. You break that fucker, Hector. On. Who said it? Who said it? I'll land on who said it. Uh, I'll spin again. You're going to spin again? All right, here we go. Hector giving it a spin. There's a spin by Hector. All right. DC, DC movies. movies, good spin for Hector Navarro. Big spin for All Hector. Right. All right, here okay. we go. Hector, right. you have four questions in the realm of DC movies. In 1978, Superman, what happens to Air Force One that causes Superman to come to the rescue? It gets struck by lightning. Correct for two, two points. points. <laughs> <laughs> Hector, who, wh what character was the main villain in Jonah Hex. <laughs> That's cruel. It's a DC film. Turnbull. We'll, ta we'll accept it. Turnbull is Fuck! correct. Absolutely. Two points. All right. Two Props points. On that. That's Two problem. points. Question three, Hector. In Batman Begins, what item did Bruce and Rachel fight over as children? Uh, it was an item of uh, Native American cultural uh, relevance that Bruce Wayne found in his backyard, a little arrowhead. Uh, you got it. You got That's it. Two points. Two yeah. points. All right. She gave it to him. She yeah. gave it to him and as a gift on his 30th birthday, and then he said, I'll be Batman. We get it. You're good at this. <laughs> <laughs> here we go. And your, your final question here to tie the game. What is the name of the Green Lantern who crashed to Earth and after being mortally wounded, his mm. power ring chose Hal Jordan to be his replacement? That would be Abin Sur. And you tied the game. That That's correct. why the champion is as good as he is. 16-16, and we go into round number three, which is Woo. the betting round. All right, so here's how round number three is going to work. The champion will, ch will spin the wheel. Whatever that lands on, the competitors will get a chance to bet upwards to three points. They can bet a minimum of zero points, up to three points once they see the category. If they bet and they get incorrect, they will lose the amount of points that they bet. And the opposite of that, they will get the amount of points that they bet if they choose correctly. All right, so we will now have Hector Navarro go ahead and spin that wheel and whatever it lands on. Use the force. Here we go. <laughs> All right, and it's gonna land. It going? okay. It's a big spin. It's a big spin, and it's gonna go on 
Spinner's Choice. All right. Spinner's Choice. You can choose any category to get the betting round. Uh, I'll take... Um I'll take MCU movies. Take the yeah. MCU. Yeah. All yeah. right, so write your points down, please, of how many you're going to bet from the MCU. Is it just one question or how just many? Just one question. You're going to get one question. Show the points to Copster, please. Let him see the points that you bet. And then we are going to ask the question. All right, here we go. 15 seconds. All right, category of the MCU. One of the first things Tony wanted when he returned from captivity in Iron Man was to hold a press conference. What was the other thing that he wanted? Do we write it down? Or? Yeah, write it down. Don't answer it. Write it down. Oh. Write it down. And then I'll, yeah, you, both you guys. Both you oh. guys write it down. And then I will, I'll tell you when to reveal it. So one of the first things Tony wanted when he returned from captivity in Iron Man was to hold a press conference. What was the other thing he wanted? All right. Pens down, please. All right. So, Hector, how many points did you bet? Three points. And you chose... I want an American cheeseburger. That's I don't know points. why he chose Burger King, but he chose Burger King. Because yeah. that's the sponsor. Three <laughs> points. Hector Navarro and Jeremy Johns, how many points did you bet? You live in LA, Tony. Swing by an in and out but what are you doing? <laughs> how many points? I bet two points. And you chose? American cheeseburger. There you go. So Jeremy Johns now only down by one point. Nice. Getting that's the, nice. That was big. Okay, 1918. Now we get into the speed round. So it's going to work like this. There's going to be five questions. When the competitors buzz in, whoever buzzes in first has two seconds to answer. If they get it correct, they get one point. If they miss, they lose one point. No. Five, you get five questions, two seconds to answer. <laughs> Here we go. Speed round in the category of Marvel Films. In the Raimi Spider-Man films, what is the name of the newspaper editor that Peter Parker worked for as a freelance photographer? Jeremy. Uh, J. Jonah Jameson. That's one point. Woo! All right. These are speed rounds. They're not necessarily hard, but you got to buzz in. All right. Question two. Harry Potter. What is the shape of Harry Potter's scar? Jeremy Lightning Johns. Bolt. Lightning bolt. Jeremy Johns now 20. Just getting a little quicker, quicker than Hector. I honestly thought you were going to say penis. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, we don't know. We don't know yet. <laughs> Question three. Categ Still a lightning bolt, yeah. All right. Category of... Star Wars, who was R2's opponent in the Holoboard game? Chewbacca. Correct. Jeremy Johns now, 21, 19, 10. Category Absolutely. Uh, category MCU, MCU. What is the name of Thor's father? Odin. Jeremy, just buzzing in, but uh, split hair. He's a beast. Hair. He's a beast. Split hair. Final question, Christian, final question. Category Lord of the Rings. Who says, if you take one more step, it'll be the farthest away? Uh, Samwise Gamgee. That's correct, even though that was a butcher comment. Jeremy Johns Very nice. Very takes nice. five points. They are five-point lead now going into the championship round. That was big for Jeremy. That speed round really paid off. All right, round number five, the championship round, the final round. It comes down to this. So the competitors will get to choose three numbers between one and 14. First one is worth two, the second one worth three, the third one worth five points. All right, so Jeremy, you have the lead right now. Please pick three numbers from one to 14. One to 14, um, I'll do seven and eight and three. Seven, eight and three. Hector. Yeah, yeah, you know, I like them. I like them. Sure, yeah. Um, four. Ten's jumping out at me. <laughs> one. Four, ten, and Great one. Yeah. Hector Navarro, the champion, will get a chance first. He needs to hit his two and his three. He has to avoid the TKO here in this round, or Jeremy Johns will be the new champion. Ken, go ahead. Absolutely. You pick the number four. That is the category of MCU. Your two-point question. What brand is Peter Quill's portable cassette player? Walkman. Sony Walkman. There you That's go. Correct. All right, That's two correct. points. <laughs> All right, here we go. So now Hector still in the Hector needs his three-pointer in order to throw it back to Jeremy. All right, Hector, the number 10 jumped out of you, and that is the category of Marvel. Marvel films. Three-point question. Other than Deadpool, what other Marvel Properties film does Ryan Reynolds have a lead role in? 
Blade Trinity. There you go. Correct. All right, so we jump okay. back now. Jeremy Johns. Jeremy Johns has to hit his two in order to force it back to Hector to force Hector mm. to do a five. All right, so Jeremy, you chose category seven for, for your first category, and you, you chose a little movie called Star Wars. For your two-pointer, how do Han, Leia, Chewie, and C-3PO slip away from the Star Destroyer before heading to Cloud City? Slip away from the Star Destroyer? Mm-hmm. Five. Wait, 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 hold on. Can you repeat the question? Yep. How do Han, Leia, Chewie, and C-3PO slip away from the Star Destroyer before heading to Cloud City? How do they slip away from the... Uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi's distracting them with Darth Vader's lightsaber fight? They float away with the trash. They float away with oh, the trash. Oh, shit. All right, okay, so, so, all right. Jeremy missed the... Star Destroyer, not Death Star. They missed, it's the pressure of the game. They missed that one. All right, so our next category, Jeremy, you chose number eight, which is the DC movies. DC movies. All right, DC movies. Jeremy, what is the name of Lex Luthor's female assistant in 1978's Superman? Uh, Miss Tessmacher. Three points for Jeremy Johns. Sends it back to Hector Navarro. Now, Hector Navarro needs to hit this. If he misses it, Jeremy Johns is the new champion. But if he hits it, it goes back to Jeremy, and Jeremy oh. will have to hit his five-pointer. Ken, here we go. All right, you chose the number one. That is the category of heroes. Five-point question. Five-point question is, who plays General Swanwick in Man of Steel? Harry Lennox. That's that is correct. correct. <laughs> Hector Navarro has done it here. He's 29, 26, forcing Jeremy Johns to earn it here. <laughs> Jeremy Johns needs to hit this in order to win the championship, or Hector will remain the champion. You got this. Here we go. Here we go. Jeremy Johns in the category of scores and soundtracks. Oh! Scores and soundtracks. <laughs> Jeremy. Jeremy, what eight, what 80s rock song did did 2008's Iron Man open to? What? I know the song. I, I can't think of the name. Dun, 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 dun. Five. Uh -huh. Oh, 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 oh. Four, I'm gonna JTE you in a second. Three, two. Can you repeat it, please? What, one. what 80s rock song did 2008's Iron Man open to? Super Freak? And your oh, no. winner! I don't know! And it's a music question! Movie Trivia Showdown! Champion of the World, Hector the Nightmare Navarro! The answer was Back in Black by ACDC. Back in black, ACDC. Wow. Hector Navarro keeps the title. Johns was humming the tune. He was there. He was right there. He, he was the humming the tune. He That's the, what happened the sometimes. Belt, the belt was right in his hands, and it just, that song, the, the dreaded scores and soundtracks, yeah. that's what it was. Man. The crowd is shocked right now. They're shocked right now. They but you know like what? I want to say this. Hector Navarro is a machine. Oh, you man. see it in his eyes. Harry he Lennox, pulls, what a pull. he pulls these answers out of his mind. It's uh, great. All right. So, Ken, I got a little thing I got to do in a second here. Yes, sir. But before we do, we're going to throw now to Grace Hancock, who's got the champion with a successful defense, Hector Navarro, and the challenger, Jeremy Johnson. Hey guys, and we're back with our champion, Hector Navarro, who just defended for the very first time the Inner Geekdom belt. Yep. Congratulations. Thank you so much. That was a very close match. That was a nail biter. I thought I was out. I thought were I was out nervous? at the end. Oh, yeah. I Did mean, you think that he had that last question? Absolutely. Yeah? Absolutely. Look, it's it's the perfect storm when you're up there. I totally get it where you freak out, but I'm like, I sure. know that Jeremy knows. Right. It's so, it's a very popular. When we right. get soundtracks and scores, I expect like scores, like composers. Like, like Howard Shore. Who, yes, sure. like who composed the, you know, right. but I'm like, Not that's such an iconic, stuff. that's such yeah. an I, like, and Marvel has soundtracks that when they use their songs, they tend to use them pretty well. Guardians is a good example. Absolutely. Iron yeah. Man, Cherry everybody Bond. remembers yeah, that, yeah, that yeah, first yeah. shot is him with the glass. Back in black, mm -hmm. hit the set. I you know, know I know. 
Oh, well, I thought I was out. I mean, okay, so how did you feel about the speed round? You were a little slow uh, to pathetic. the buzzer, I my was friend. pathetic. I know. I think it was because I was waiting for, like, the whole question. The first question was, who was Peter Parker's boss? And I thought it was a trick question because they said, who was his editor? And I'm like, right. editor-in-chief was J. Jonah Jameson. <laughs> like, another editor was Robbie Robertson. Like, I'm Meh. like, yeah, I'm like, it's, I'm like, it's too easy. It's too easy. But that was my own fault. I should have just buzzed in. And, and just, just kind of gone for gone it. Gone for it, yeah. Gone for it. So, I mean, that's the thing pathetic. with the speed round. It's kind of, it's a hit or miss thing. Yeah. Okay, so this is the first time that you've ever defended this belt. What yes. do you, what's next for you? What are we doing now? I don't know. I honestly don't know. Uh, I got a promising career, you know, I'm part of the oh. Young Bucks. Oh, here we go. Here we here oh, we hello, Look sir. Look at this. Uh, we got some real representation going here. Yes. Uh, you know, we, we have a lot going with the Young Bucks. People underestimate us. We have the champion here. Champion. Interdictum. You know, I don't know what those lion uh, didn't, you know, I'm sorry, unfortunately. Lion's dead. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Those chumps. Oh, are you in that? Yeah. I am in that. I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah, oh, sorry. no, no, no. Sorry yeah, sorry oh, sorry that. that I'm hanging out with <laughs> Completely undefeated champions all day. Yeah, no, I'm good. All right, listen, that was a good one. All right, I'll give listen, you that one. That was listen, a good listen. burn. You guys burn. tried to recruit Jeremy Johns. Yep. Didn't work. Oh, uh, ouch. listen. This this man, he's he's proven what he's Young got. Bucks. Young Bucks. Young we're, Bucks. We're up here. What about Koi? What about uh, Koi? Yeah, oh, I, I hear Koi? that you have a challenge from. Did he from, try to challenge me? Yeah. This is honestly the first time hearing about it. Well, <laughs> we're going to put you on the spot. How do Koi, you feel about that? Look, I saw Koi's last performance and he dropped some balls. I'll put it that way. And he knows wow. his stuff, but he dropped some balls, some stuff that I know he knew. So honestly, him as a competitor, I'm not concerned about it. He's a good, dear friend. We'll have a great time talking about Spider Man and Deadpool and maybe other things he also enjoys. But as far as going up against him, I'm not worried about it. You're not intimidated. Not at all. Koi, it'll be a good time. I'll all beat right. him. I'll shake his hand. We'll go get some comic books afterwards. That's me and Koi. Aw, I love your guys' really precious attitude. It's it very really precious. warms my heart. Yeah. All right. Well, sir, uh, congrats to the Young Bucks and yes. congrats on defending this. Thank you very much. All right, guys. And here we are with. Our unfortunate loser, I have to say, Jeremy, I it pains me to say this, I was kind of rooting for you. Don't tell anybody I said that. You were so close. It was such was. a tight match. You were I killing was. it in the speed round. What happened? I, uh, You know, uh, scores and soundtracks happened, which is funny about... It, it was by one question, and right. that, I'm it glad. Was very close. I'm glad it wasn't a stomp. It was a good game. It was a good round. It was a good match, all all in all. Uh, but when it's so close and you just miss it, it kind of hurts that much. I more mean, are you ever gonna watch Iron Man ever again in your life? Yeah, and I'll never remember the name of that song. How because can you not know? ACDC is my jam. You know what's funny? You disappointed me. Everyone and every other schmodown is like, "How do you not know everything about Casablanca? It's a classic." I know. I'm not Mark <laughs> Ellis. I don't know about. I don't know the titles of. And classic then we get rock. to Iron Man and ACDC, yeah. and you drop. The ball. It, yeah, totally. It's uh, right when he says scores and soundtracks. So I was like, well, this might be trouble unless it's who composed the music to Star Wars. I'm probably <laughs> a little screwed right now. Right, so. right, right. Okay, so. You know, you studied up on your Harry Potter, which you got all correct, by the way. It was very yeah, bad. I know you got all Harry Potter. That. So today was not really your day. What's next, Mr. Jeremy Johns? Well, you know, I think only you in a situation. Spectacular man. Oh, stop. I think only in a situation <laughs> like this can you lose by one question and have it not really be your day. So right, thank you for right. that. Um, now, You're welcome. Now I, I go back to uh, just doing the YouTube videos for the people and living um, a relatively happy life online. It's not bad. I mean, I hope you're not saying that you're retiring from the schmodown, Mr. Jones. No, 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 no. I mean, I'll be back for it. And you know, the good thing about this is there was a lot of venom between Hector and Robert Meyer Burnett. Sure. I didn't know what to expect with Hector. Right. He's a really nice dude, really cool dude, really he knows his nice. stuff. If I lost to an asshole, that'd be one thing. Cool guy, knows his shit. There's a reason he has the belt. He does deserve it. So I'm glad I lost to someone of his, you know, quality of character. All right. Well, hey, I think that's a great attitude to have. Uh, I don't see a lot of that. I'm impressed by that. Oh, well, don't tell anybody. I'm sorry that you didn't take the belt home today. Ah, uh, it's all right. So I got my Star Wars curtain cape. <laughs> yes, you do, as we all are aware. All right, back to you guys. So there you have it. The champion, Hector Navarro, barely gets by Jeremy Johns. I'm sure Jeremy is going to be kicking himself over that Star Wars question. Absolutely. Ken. He's going to be wrapping himself in those Star Wars sheets crying tonight. Well, let's, listen, the, we've had two great matches already. The Inner Geekdom, your match, and there's a lot more to come. Don't go anywhere. Make sure you click on the next part because we have my match against Jeff Snyder. It's a number one contenders match. And, of course, the triple threat match for the championship. Dangerous Dan Merle, the outlaw John Roca, and the champion Mark Yodi Riley go head to head to head in just a little bit. Click on that link.